Salithier lady came with complaint of bleeding uh, per rectum for one and a half month uh, with altered uh, st uh, altered ha bowel habit uh, and uh, alternate uh, diarrhea and uh, constipation. Uh, patient without any history of any weight loss and on examination uh, on uh, digital rectal examination a constricting growth was filled, uh, felt 3 cm above the anal verge and uh, it was irregular the surface was irregular however the upper margin was not able uh, not reached uh, so actually to make it simpler you have a patient with difficulties for in passage to pain on passing the on defecation or is there any bleeding also? bleeding for one hour history of bleeding here how old is your patient 35 years old so what are the differentials come to your mind when you have a patient 35 year old coming with bleeding bleeding for uh, we can uh, think of a uh, hemorrhoid it may be external hemorrhoid as there is pain and it may be malignancy also and hemorrhoid can be due to secondary to malignancy also so you're thinking of anorectal benign causes malignancy any other differential not many, so let's not waste time. Uh, Rishi, anything you would like to ask? It's a brief case. We, are not, we, we understand that you're not giving up, you're not presenting the whole history. The, the whole history, we are not, we're looking at the short case discussion. Yes, sir. More or less, he has given the short history. Covered. Now, if you were to look at the benign versus malignant cause, what more question you would like to ask? Uh, uh, to rule out, we will uh, ask her. Uh, whether there is any history of uh, significant weight loss, that is uh, significant weight loss, or any history of anorexia, or any metastatic symptoms, according to specific to the disease. Now, uh, when you are talking about significant weight loss, what do you mean by significant weight loss? Significant weight loss means uh, more than 10% weight loss in last six months, or more than 5% in last one month of previous. Unintended. Unintended. If you do intended somebody can lose weight and be nice and fit like you. That's not what we are looking at, right? But primarily, when you are approaching any patient with bleeding for rectum, I think broadly divided into painful and painless variety. And this is related to whether the lesion is below the dentate line or above the dentate line. Could you tell us what are the, what are the features below the dentate line that are different from the ones above the dentate line? From symptoms, there will be pain uh, when the bleeding is from lower down and uh, upper uh, bleeding from up will be less not pain. bleeding. We are talking about just yeah. the symptoms. So, they may be bleeding or they may not be. Below the, below the dentate line, you say, you are saying lesions are painful. painful. Above the dentate line, the lesions are painless. Why? Because uh, the visceral sensation above the dental line and somatic sensation So, autonomic the... innervation above somatic below the dentate line. So that's what you think. That's one. Number two. And also, the involvement of lymph nodes can be seen below the... That's much later. If there's a malignancy, which, which group of lymph nodes is involved below the dentate line? The inherent lymph node, bilateral lymph Above that? Above that is internal ilia for the system. No, but then it'll go along the para-rectal and along the inferior the dentate, which is a para-aortic. That's the chain. Dialic is not the chain. Dialic, it will happen via the inguinal root. So that's that's just the opposite. But importantly, what are the other features? That's okay, lymph lymphatics. So one difference is the innervation. What is the epithelium below the dentate line? Skeratinized squamous epithelium. Very good. About that? Is uh, columnar epithelium. First difference is this. So everything related to this epithelium would be different below. The lesions, if it happened, will be squamous cell carcinoma. Above that will be adenocarcinoma. That is when, when it becomes cancer. Let's keep it simple. Below the dentate line, the lesions are like fissure, which is actually painful, defecation, with or without bleeding, right? Above the dentate line, you're saying hemorrhoids, polyps, you know, there's a P, three P's, right? Files, prolapse, and polyps, and papilloma. They're all painless. But any of these, when it changes, like even the piles, when they say hemorrhoids, when they don't descend below the dentate line, they are painless. So sometimes 
the grade 3 hemorrhage which drank grade 4 which come out, they can be painful. Or when they get thrombos, they can be painful. So then there is a different mechanism to it. The other difference is <coughs> blood supply. Can I ask Dr. The above dental line is from intramesentric artery and blood supply is below. No, 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 above is portal, below is systemic. And the junction of the two is portal systemic and then that's how you get what, what we call as the, you know, the, the portal piles that you get below. So making, making a long story short, there is a difference between the lesions above and below the dentate lungs. It's a watershed area, right? So when the patient says, I have a painful defecation, you're only thinking in terms of below the dentate line, but the lesion can be above the dentate line and if it's malignant, it could have infiltrated into the surrounding nerves, etc. and produce pain, etc. So constipation with bleeding is an important feature in all these cases. Okay? Now the important aspect of approaching these patients is you're very right. So if you have to differentiate the two, you know, fissure is a ischemic region. Fissure is nothing but ischemia. And the boom, what are the types of fissures? Primary and secondary. Primary is at 6 and 12, others are all secondary. Like primary hemorrhoids are 3, 7 and 11, all are other secondary. So the causes of secondary or multiple fissures are the usual cox crush cancer, the fourth case, three case, and also immunocompromised individuals, HIV infections, etc. Multiple, like multiple fissures, multiple fissures, etc. So when you're looking at an ischemic ulcer, there is the reason for that. Because the blood supply to 6 o'clock is the least. Is the, what can I I'll explain it to you on a paper. Meanwhile, you take the history of loss of appetite, any distant metastasis in the form of bone pain, bleeding, or sorry, chest pain, giddiness, dizziness, etc. How do you examine? What is this position called? Same, same position. And it's not ideal. You should have put a sandbag Sand under this. Both the knees and knees are flexed up to the is First of all, always inspect properly and avoid. Explain to the patient there is spasm. Growth, which is not letting my finger go in, and it's extremely tender. So I won't even do it. It is abandoned because patient will have pain. Remember, never cause pain. And so we have done it. DRE it's called, no longer PR. Once you've done it, what next step? Quickly tell me what would, how would you approach it. What is the working clinical diagnosis? Working Along with DRE, you should also examine the abdomen for any hepatomegaly, ascites. When you're a woman, you should do go vagina, look for any uh, pouch of Douglas fullness, any tenderness in the pouch of Douglas or in the pelvis. You should also look for features of ascites. Always examine the workhouse node, which is actually a skeleton node rather than a supraglutal node, to rule out any distant metastasis. She looks like a preserved lady. We don't know. Stitches can be benign as well as malignant. They could be even a solitary ulcer syndrome, so just an ulcer and a syndrome. So we need to do it under anesthesia. When the patient has no pain, we should do it. And we, have not, we have not done the DRE today. We just felt it and we <coughs> left it as such. Importantly, patient would then need imaging, which is less painful, non-invasive. Meanwhile, you have a working diagnosis of? 35-year-old uh, lady with bleeding for rectum, most probably of malignant etiology, without any history of metastasis. Not bad, but how do you say malignant? Uh, because on, uh, on uh, uh, symptomatically, patient had pain, but that is going against malignancy, but on examination there is a... Not against it, it can still be painful. Now on examination there is a irregular surface filled over the lesion and we are not able so this to... In history there is a bleeding per rectum, okay, and in history she is giving the history of the spurious diarrhea. These two are so in the what, family in the history. What is spurious diarrhea? What is spurious diarrhea in history? Patient has... Spurious means false diarrhea. Patient has tendency for uh, defecation but there is only no, mucus coming. There is obstruction proximal to that, there is usually collection of people. She has given the detailed history. She gave that. She has an episode of constipation followed by.
because it's hard to collect bacteria, actonate, mucus gets mixed, so liquid thing comes out. She thinks it's diarrhea, but it is not. Okay, that's one. But feeling of incomplete evacuation is a more important history with this thing. So left side lesions mostly have increasing constipation, spurious diarrhea, feeling of incomplete evacuation. And usually the lesions to begin with may be painless, but later on when it infiltrates up. If it infiltrates into sphincter, it will produce the features. No? And she has features of a little bit of incompetence, uh, incontinence. When you examine, you are given adequate anesthesia and anesthesia, so we will not repeat this again. Push in some jelly, wait for it to act, and patient should be sedated before we use it. Why did we abandon today? There is a spasm on the sphincter, so it's a contraindication to DRE. We'll discuss that in the remaining class. You saw that lady, you know, with bleeding PR, with, which was painful, right? And DRE revealed uh, anal tone, 3 plus. So we did not do it today. We had done it earlier after having in, put in some jelly for about half an hour to 45 minutes. And we found there is a annular growth all around, right? And patient was suspicious of malignancy. So usually when you're looking at it, this is the spine, that is rectum. I'm drawing a cross section to explain. That's the pubic symphysis. And it was a lady, so there'll be a uterus here, vagina, and bladder here. So, the peritoneal reflection goes like this, no? Yes. That's the anterior abdominal wall. And fascia of Denon Williams, am I right? Pouch of Douglas, Kaya. Pouch of Douglas, uh, recruited pouch. Ah, so this is it, no? BOD. Yes. The growth is here. And the pain could be due to infiltration of any. This is the cross section to indicate the same thing. Can you use this color? Yes. So this would be the peritoneal reflection. And we have this fascia here, perineal body is here. Roughly, I'm just drawing it so that you can understand. This is the coccyx, this is sacrum, it's fine. So this is where the growth was felt We, uh, we discussed the benign causes, etc. So we looked at the benign causes as fissure, which is an ischemic ulcer, <coughs> below dentate line. No? And the reason for dentate line being, we discussed that above the dentate line you have above, below. We have stratified squamous epithelium, right? Oh, sorry, I mean up below, above, right? This is column. Therefore, well, you understood, no? Uh, these bees come here. Files, prolapse, papilloma. They and polyp, they are painless. All peas, no? You enjoy that. They are all painful because the supply is somatic. Hmm. Nowadays, the theory is this, you know, for Fisher. It's an ulcer which is lined by, which is under that is lying the internal sphincter. And it's most common at 6 o'clock, next is 12 o'clock, 3 and 12 are rare sites. The reason is, as the blood supply comes through the sphincter to supply, the least amount comes here. But here the supply is good at 3 and 12, 9 o'clock. These are primary features, anywhere else they are secondary features, they usually happen in HIV or even a compromised individuals, right? Now, the... Blood vessels cross the sphincter to supply it. 
and if there is spasm of the sphincter there is ischemia here and that's what leads to ulcer so therefore fissure is an ischemic ulcer that's why you know the treatment is to take care of the spasm and some people use those creams you know nitroglycerin or nifedipine or motox etc the purpose is the same internal sphincter which controls only 10% of continence rest is external sphincter no that is relaxed sits bath does the same and uh, sphincterotomy does the same it's the same purpose all of them have the same purpose so that is the basis of fissure hemorrhoids of course you know they are usually at 3 and 7 and 11 3 7 and 11 are primary o'clock huh they are primary elsewhere they are secondary so these are usually the anal questions and there are many theories for that discussing this case we were we were talking about the investigation no the patient had feeling of incomplete evacuation right pardon my handwriting and spurious diarrhea which we explained what is it huh? we will not repeat it due to structural growth collection of material mucus everything above it and that bacteria acts on it becomes liquid and is brought down and then thirdly you the bleeding is usually fresh the right sided growths produce this is all seen in the left sided you know, including rectum so this is how we going to proceed and when you done a dre we should do a proctoscopy but give good anesthesia and pain management even examination under anesthesia some people recommend which is of course going to cost some anesthesia time what we can do is then take a biopsy confirm it usually it's adeno when it's lying close to the anal wall if it is squamous then you're looking at these days we don't call them carcinoma of the anal canal they are all called as ca ano rectum squamous the management is nigro regime no chemo radiation the whole approach changes you'll have inguinal lymph node involvement which we discussed already why huh this is by mitomycin based based chemo followed by rt and then salvage whatever sometimes we have to do a divergent colostomy to make sure that you go here of course now you do need to do investigation to stage it and this doesn't look like a sphincter preservation possible and do a colonoscopy to exclude synchronous lesion very good and also if you cannot negotiate the scope you can do a virtual colonoscopy you can watch it in some of my videos on this colonoscopy and of course see ct to stage it and then plan surgery versus chemo radiation there are various views this can help you preserve the sphincter in some cases because it can allow you to downsize it down stage it but not likely here because the sphincter is already involved clinically but we'll have to establish that and that's where they think mri is more useful t staging for t staging mri is good for n staging c c t and for m staging you do ultrasound abdomen first and again cct abdomen and also markers like ca which are not diagnostic but for prognostic purposes and then you manage it accordingly i think i have discussed it amply in a lot of my discussions with the the case is apr uh, versus ultra low uh, lar or lar we can do followed by adjuvant chemo radiation okay chemo rt here we usually use folfox or folfiri or other regimes any questions relating to that case done no okay